Hello guys, welcome back to another episode of Little Grip Garage. And today we're going to be taking my old abandoned go-kart, putting new tires, seat, paint, motor, and even a live axle to make this thing do burnouts. But the first step is to tear it down. My name's Bentley and this is Little Grip Garage. Some of you guys might have seen this go-kart before. I bought this on Facebook with my own money and it's really junky, we got it running, but it's missing a seat, has no brakes, flat tire, and the chains kept failing. So this is gonna be part one of many videos about this. So I think we should get a closer look of it. So here's the motor. It ran pretty good, but it had a few carburetor issues. Um, the chain and clutch, the clutch was broken, so it always just take off. And this chain right here actually snapped. Those are the brakes, they didn't work too good because the clutch was broken and they just didn't really work. The tires are really bald and flat, so is that one. We're also going to be putting a live axle in this so that both tires can spin for more traction. We also noticed that the frame is bent. It's over here, straight, and then over here it's aiming down. And then we have new seats that we're going to put in here because one of them is missing and they're really junky, also new seat belts. Um, the steering is pretty good, but it looks like the other owner hit a tree or some sort in the front. But I think the first step is to clean this thing out and start disassembling it. So I was looking a little closer here before we vacuum it out, and I found this random bone sitting where the seat used to be. What do you think that's too? No idea. A snake or something? Bradley would probably be interested in that. Yeah. cleaned up pretty good we're gonna start tearing this down I think first we're gonna start with the seat belts and then probably take this roll bar off and I actually might paint this go-kart but I need you guys to comment down below what color I should paint it once we got the seat out I started looking and I figured out that you can actually adjust the seat belts, and it still surprisingly works hmm. and then uh, I figured out that the seat belts used to have to be black if you pull them down I thought they used to be gray or something, but just dirt and stuff. What kind of belts do you want to put in that next? Are they like this or different? Probably different. Like over the shoulder belts? Yeah. Cool. Do you think this will work with the new seat? It might. That would be nice. Yep. Scoot it forward and back. Maybe mom can drive it that way. Yeah. Well, next we have some glass cleaner and some rags and we're going to wipe it down.
have all the seat belts off. I think we're gonna move on to this black roll cage. There's four bolts in the back and two in the front. And then we're gonna take this off. So if you can see, this tire is actually really bald and has no traction. And this one looks like it's almost brand new. That's actually because since it doesn't have a live axle, only that tire spins. But once we get a live axle, both the tires will be spinning so we get more traction. cages off it actually looks really weird but that's gonna help us because we're gonna have more access to put our new motor in which is a 16 horsepower electric start predator engine but it's looking like it's gonna be very tight fit in here so let's hope it fits so the next thing to do is to get this old robin motor out of here we put it up on jack stands so it's easier to access the four bolts on the bottom to get the motor out I'm gonna see if I can pull this motor out of here now. So these are band brakes right now, but since we're putting a live axle on this, we're actually gonna to switch to disc brakes. So right now we're actually gonna clean this out and see if we can get this cover off, and then we're gonna take the rear tires off. All right, now I'm gonna take this cotter pin out right here so that, I can, so that I can slide this out and then disconnect the brakes. So I started thinking about it. We're just gonna cut this all out because we don't need this tire or hub or any of that. And then we can get ready for the live axle. Instead of one wheel drive, now we're going to make this thing two wheel drive. So we just unboxed the live axle that we're going to put into this. And we have a lot of issues. First off, we bought two of these high performance clutches. And they're the complete wrong size. And then this brake thing is way too short to go from back here to up there. And then the tires that I picked up are three bolt and these are four bolt. So we're gonna have to figure something out about all these issues. Now your tires and wheels, those were custom. You spent a lot of money on those. So would yeah. it be better to get a whole nother? Yeah, this was cheaper than the wheels. So probably. We just sell this or something and get another yeah. axle kit. Yeah. I wonder if the three bolt hub would have the smaller chain. Maybe. Because this seems like this is like a really super high performance. Yeah, like, this one looks like it's for like a big go -kart Yeah, this is like shifter cart kind of stuff. Yeah. So maybe we get a different one. Should we pull the motor over here and see if that would at least fit in there? Yeah. Okay, go grab that. excited to open this because I have actually never opened this myself either. Oh, it's like in another oh, box. Oh, that's huge. That is way bigger than I thought it was. <laughs> um, so. I don't think that's going to fit very good. Does this one have electric start? I think it does. I can't see anything. So we just got it out of the box and it looks like it is electric start because there's all this weird stuff and a switch right here. I'm actually very happy that it's electric start 
And if you want, it can also be pull start, which is nice. Um, and this thing is way bigger than I thought it was going to be. And we might have a little issue of getting it to fit in there. This is the size comparison. That's the old one. And that's the new one. Is it just really long or is it stuck? Oh, there's another nut. Go ahead. Ouch. Is that all? Oh, no, there's one. Ready? Yep. All right, tip it up. This thing weighs more than you do. Oh, oh I just got oil on my hand. Grease. It's all right. Long way from your heart. Add fluids. Okay. What do you think? Good purchase? Yeah. Now you got to try to figure out how to make it fit. Yeah, it's going to be a big problem. <laughs> Does it fit? <laughs> no, it's not even close. Oh. Wow. Yeah. Hmm. Got an issue there. Yeah, so the clutch is supposed to be right there, but it's also supposed to be in this area. And it's sticking out right now. I think it could. Maybe. But then the bolts don't line up down there. That's about where it sits. Yeah, and that's still not going to work. So we're just trying to line everything up right now and see how it's going to fit. And so far, this motor is going to have to be over here on the passenger side in order for the live axle to fit. And then we have to make custom mounts and stuff for the live axle and a custom motor mount plate for the engine. Yeah, because if this is something like that, brakes and sprocket, that's going to have to be aligned with the clutch. So you got to move your motor mount plate over, don't you? Yeah. So all this, that needs cut out and have to make a different plate. And... We should probably get the other axle in first. Yeah. So we see what we got, huh? Yep. And then start mocking stuff in. But the good news is, you might not have to move your seat bracket. Yeah, it's going to be she's tight. Gonna barely fit, but... So we did a lot of work tonight. We got everything stripped down, roll cage off, tires cut off, and we unboxed our live axle and 16 horsepower motor. But that's going to be a lot of work to mount the live axle and motor in. So stay tuned for part two of this build. Part two, we're going to be mounting the live axle and making motor mounts. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Get some.